All right, let's jump into another deep dive. Today, we're switching things up a bit. We're going to be focusing on just one source. Opus 33 Bagatelles, a collection of poems by Peter Cowlam. What's really cool about this collection is that each of the 33 poems, they're all short poems, is titled Like a Piece of Music. Hmm, that's interesting. It's like he's creating this, this kind of dialogue between poetry and music, you know, which already has me hooked. I see what you mean. The way the collection is structured definitely suggests a link between those two art forms. And that alone makes you want to find out more. For sure. And just glancing at the titles, you can already see all these different themes popping up. Like there's one called The Boardroom. Yeah. And I'm not talking about some boring presentation. Callum actually says this. Is a medieval country in an eternally troubled night in every hand you see a knife. That doesn't sound like any board meeting I've ever been to. Wow, that's pretty intense. The way he uses language there is really striking. It is. It's like he's comparing the modern corporate world to a medieval battlefield. He uses strong imagery like knives and eternally troubled night to make you feel a sense of danger. Like cutthroat competition. Yeah, it's like he's taking away that polished surface of you know, corporate life and showing us what might really be going on underneath. It makes you think twice about those meetings. Okay, now for something totally different. Pleasure Beach. Oh, I like that one. This one instantly reminded me of trips to amusement parks when I was a kid. Cotton candy, roller coasters, all that fun stuff. Right. It's a title that makes you feel happy and nostalgic. Totally. But then Callum throws in these lines... All I recall under the white flannel of a cold compress is a sail unfurled to the ocean. And suddenly the whole mood changes. It does, doesn't it? It's not just about amusement park rides anymore. Exactly. It's like there's this feeling of longing, almost sadness. And that cold compress, is he talking about a real injury or is it a metaphor for something deeper, like emotional pain? It's clever how he uses ambiguity. Callum gives us just enough to get us curious, but leaves the rest up to us to figure out. And that contrast between the title Pleasure Beach and those lines about a cold compress adds another layer. It's like he's hinting that maybe those happy memories aren't as simple as they seem. It's like those old photo albums you find tucked away. At first glance, everything looks happy and perfect, but then you start noticing the little details, the expressions on people's faces, the shadows, and you realize there's a whole story behind those smiles. Speaking of stories, there's another title that seems to come straight from literature. Zivago. It's just one line. A horseman riding slowly over snow. I'm no expert, but I'm guessing this has something to do with Dr. Zivago, that famous novel. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. And it's amazing how Callum can create such a specific mood with just a few words. You can practically feel it, can't you? Yeah. You feel the coldness of the snow, the vastness of the Russian landscape. It's like he's captured the entire novel in a single image. It's not just the image, though. It's the pace, too. That word slowly really highlights how difficult the journey is, the sense of pushing through hardship. It makes you wonder, is he talking about the human experience in general? Like our ability to keep going even when things are tough? Maybe so. There are a lot of titles that touch on memory in the past, aren't there? We've got Speak, Memory, Childhood Corners, Don't Look Back. It's true. It's like Callum is encouraging us to think about our own pasts, you know? <laughs> to revisit those moments that have made us who we are. Exactly. And in Speak, Memory, he gives us this peek into that personal reflection. To be honest, all I recall of home is an array of tiny fruit trees grown in endless tidy rows. See how specific that image is. It is, yeah. But it also speaks to a universal experience. We all have those little details that could bring back a flood of memories. It's true. It's like those fruit trees, they might seem ordinary, but they represent a whole world of experiences. And the fact that he says they're growing in tidy rows makes me think, is he saying that we organize our memories in a certain way? Maybe even try to make them fit a certain narrative. That's a great point. It raises questions about whether we can truly trust our memories. Right. How much of what we remember actually happened and how much has been shaped by our own biases. Callum seems to be asking us to question not only what we remember, but also how we understand those memories. We're just getting started, and already this deep dive is so much more than just looking at some poetry titles. It's like we found this treasure chest of ideas. I know. And that's the amazing thing about poetry. It can take these complex ideas yeah. and emotions and pack them into just a few carefully chosen words. It can really stay with you. Yeah. We've only just scratched the surface. There's so much more to discover. It's amazing how these little poem titles can get such interesting conversations going. Like take Kelhur, for instance. Yeah. We talked about how it means, what time is it? 
but it's clearly more than just asking for the time. Yeah, it definitely creates a mood, doesn't it? Like we're waiting for something to happen. And then Callum adds this, well, it's twilight, cliffside, where jagged rocks melt into smooth, dark blue. You can almost feel the suspense building. It's incredible how just a few words can paint such a vivid picture. You feel like you're standing right there on that cliff. I know, right? Yeah. You can see the sun setting, the rough rocks against the smooth water. It's almost like time is slowing down, becoming something real that you can touch. And that idea of time flowing connects really well with another title, Synesthesia, Day 7. Callum gives us this line, To take Alkin's Etude No. 2, Opus 39, a large furred mammal with an ambling, shambling gait. It's like he's turning music into something physical. That's wild. It's like you're experiencing the music not just with your ears, but with your other senses, too. Exactly. You can picture this big, furry creature, feel its fur, and see it moving. It's a totally new way to experience art. It really shows Callum's ability to blend different art forms together. He's not just writing poetry about music. He's creating this whole sensory experience where music, words, and images are all connected. We've talked a lot about the more serious side of this collection, but there are definitely some titles that suggest a more playful, even humorous side, like Amiss Amiss. Oh, that's a good one. Just the title itself is like a little word game, playing with the different meanings of Amiss. It is, and there's also some social commentary hidden in there. Right. He says, I think really Time's Arrow ought to have read in a circle or like a palindrome. Time Semite, perhaps. Mm -hmm. It's like he's making fun of the way we think about time as a straight line. Yeah. It's as if he's saying, what if we looked at history differently? What if time wasn't an arrow, but a circle? Always repeating. Makes you rethink things. Definitely. And then there's English tradition. It's presented like a song. English tradition, the tune of Michael Finnegan. <laughs> Can you imagine a bunch of stuffy academics in a pub singing a song about T.S. Eliot? That's hilarious. You wouldn't expect someone like Callum to write something so lighthearted, especially about a serious poet like T.S. Eliot. It shows he's not afraid to poke a little fun at literary traditions. And by doing that, he makes poetry more approachable, don't you think? Like he's breaking down the barriers between highbrow and lowbrow culture, showing that poetry can be both thought-provoking and fun. We've been seeing that throughout our exploration of these titles. Callum mixes social commentary, personal thoughts, humor, and vivid imagery. It makes for a collection that's both intellectually stimulating and emotionally engaging. It definitely shows how versatile he is as a writer. He can move between all these different styles effortlessly, keeping the reader on their toes. And that's what makes this deep dive so interesting. We're not just learning about a specific topic. We're getting inside the mind of this really talented writer, seeing how he uses language to create meaning and evoke feelings. And I think we're both ready to see how all these themes and ideas play out in the actual poems. Absolutely. These titles have given us a little taste of what's to come. I'm excited to read the whole collection and really savor each poem. But before we wrap up, let's take a moment to think about what we've learned so far. It feels like we've just scratched the surface, really, with Opus 33 Bagatelles. And what's striking is how these, these simple poem titles have sparked such a, a deep and fascinating conversation. Well, I think that speaks to Callum's talent, don't you? Definitely. He can pack so much meaning into just a few words, like he's inviting the reader to dig deeper, to explore all those layers of thought and emotion. It makes you realize that even a title can be a, a work of art. Right. Each one is so carefully crafted, like a tiny palm in itself, capturing the essence of the work, but also sparking your curiosity, making you think. Absolutely. Yeah. And as we've seen, these titles give us a preview of all the different themes and styles Callum explores in this collection. From the social commentary of the boardroom, to the wordplay in Avius and Mist, to the vivid imagery of Kelher. He's such a versatile writer. And we can't forget those titles that connect to memory and personal experience. Speak, memory, childhood corners, don't look back. Right. They all suggest a deeper look at the past, at the moments that have shaped us. It's like Callum's encouraging us to go on our own journeys of reflection. That's a good point. And maybe that's one of the main things we've learned from this deep dive, that poetry, even in its shortest forms, has the power to, to connect us to something bigger than ourselves to get us talking about universal human experiences, time, memory, the search for meaning. It's like Callum is giving us these little keys, you know, these poem titles that unlock whole worlds of thought and emotion. And as readers, it's up to us to walk through those doors and see what's there. And that's the best part, isn't it? We're not just sitting here passively absorbing information. 
we're actively creating meaning. We bring our own experiences and perspectives, which makes the conversation richer and helps us understand the work on a deeper level. So as we wrap up this deep dive into Opus 33 Bagatelles, I want to leave you with this. Don't just take our word for it. Find this collection, let the titles draw you in, and then dive into the poems themselves. I agree. I think you'll be surprised by what you find. And who knows? Maybe you'll even be inspired to write your own Bagatelles. Mm. Little moments of beauty and insight captured in words. Because, as we've seen today, sometimes the most powerful ideas can be expressed in the simplest, most evocative ways. Well said. Until next time, enjoy reading and keep those creative sparks alive.